All right, YouTube, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Seward here for the podcast. I want to give a big war eagle to all of the Auburn fans out there. Um, of course, you know, Auburn appears to be in dire straits considering a two and five season that, you know, most of the, well, let's go into this. Go ahead and like this video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. Down in Deep South, college football is king, and on the plains of Auburn, the battle cry is war friggin eagle all right so auburn is kind of in dire straits two and five i mean not many people or not many social media outlets as a matter of fact a lot of uh folks even thought that this would be kind of a turnaround season for the auburn tigers they kind of thought that auburn would be a team that would be kind of a problem uh for sec teams and in a roundabout kind of way they've shown flashes to where they could have been, um, you know, you talk about the turnover debacle in the middle of the, in the top half of the season and the lack of ex execution and many things that have led Auburn to this point. Now we talk about the three takeaways of the Missouri game. Now I thought Auburn had some opportunity of course, because of the nature of how Auburn has played football for most of the year, I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't get excited about the 17-6 to 6 portion of that game where Auburn had everything going for them, looked like they were going to be able to put the, the game away. But because of what has led Auburn to that point, you know, usually spelled uh, breakdowns and things of that nature that led to Auburn in, in losses. You know, we go back to the California game where the epic turnovers. You go back to the Arkansas game where Auburn had some opportunity but always gave a big play up on uh, third downs and things of that nature. And that's where Auburn kind of is as a program, you know, there could be some interconnectivity between the more seasoned players and the more, you know, the younger players on this team that there could be some disconnect there. But let's get into the three takeaways from the Missouri game. One, I think the, the defense continues to play pretty sound, you know, only allowing 21 points. Seven of those points coming at the last drive of the football game. Having all the opportunities, having, you know, turnovers that may have gone their way, still having that situation, you know, 95 yards on when the game is on the line, I think that's unacceptable. I think there may have been a questionable pass interference penalty that kept that drive going, but, but for the most part, Auburn should not have even been in that position. You know, you look at the total yards gained for Missouri, less than 400 yards. I think this is a pretty good offense, even without Brady uh, Cook and having some of the receivers that they had at their, their disposal, disposal. I think Auburn did a pretty good job of keeping the offense at bay. But here's the thing that you got to look at. When you continually give teams opportunities to hang in the game, hang in the game, hang in the game, and those things start to add up, miss field goals, miss opportunities in the red zone, those things start to stand uh, stand out. Um, takeaway number two, I think Auburn's defense continues to struggle with third down defense efficiency. I think they gave up seven um, first downs and you just can't, um, you can't do that. You know, when you have the opportunity to get any team off the field, especially a SEC team, you got to do it. It can't be a second down and 15 situation that converts into a first down. That usually, com you know, converts into points, usually converts into, you know, situations that put your, your defense further at uh, disarray, including 
the idea of the fact that your offense is just inefficient to begin with. And I think that's something that has been an Achilles heel for the Auburn defense um, thus far. I think they play pretty sound. You look at the average points that they give up per game, really good enough. I think they play sound enough to win football games. But the offense just hasn't been able to complement that on the stat sheet and give Auburn chances to win. Because you, although you play really good defense, which Auburn has, you still have to have at least a complementary offense to give yourself a chance for victory. And another take, you know, I think this is the third one. Guys, Peyton Thorne is just, I like him. I like all Auburn players, and I would never badmouth any Auburn player like I did in the past. I used to bash Bo Nix. But now that I know what I know, Bo Nix was doing the best that he could with what he had. Peyton Thorne, a six-year starter for the most part, very experienced. He doesn't give you what you need to be a winning quarterback. He has missed every opportunity possible to be a winning quarterback at Auburn. I don't know if he even wants to be a winning quarterback at Auburn. If Auburn gets behind late in the game, I don't know if you can trust him. I don't know if you can even depend on him to make the kind of plays that you need him to make and not collapse and retreat and put Auburn in dire straits, which is what he did against Missouri. Now, I will give him this. There was some uh, situation where, you know, you got the pass to the transfer from Georgia, uh, Georgia State. Yeah, he should have caught it. I don't think he should have gone that route. You got a six foot wide receiver trying to do a jump ball in the end. I, I just don't think that's a good move to make. But Auburn moving forward, if they're going to be successful, more high percentage passes in certain situations will be the key. Um, I think there needs to be some revamp with the offensive line because there seem to be some discrepancies with assignment, especially at the offensive tackle and what they are being asked to do. But right now, I, I think, you know, you got a talented team that the most key positions are just not being executed. Is it coaching? Maybe so. Um, I do feel that Hugh Freeze has some leverage with his recruiting classes. You know, you talk about a big time recruiting class in 2024, trending at a really good recruiting class in 2025 and a monster class probably in 2026. So, I mean, all the firing clamoring probably is not there. But I think the Auburn fans want to win right now. And I think they have an opportunity in this Kentucky game to get that and get things on track and find a way to salvage from a pride perspective a season that may or may not get you into a bowl game, but you got to see the progression that the team has made. You look at the wide receiver production, way better than it has been. Rivaldo Fairweather was the best productive receiver from last year. Right now, he's got about the same yards he has, but he has Keandre Lambert-Smith, who has five twice as much as he had from last year. So from that, that standpoint, it's better. You have Jarquez Hunter. They feed him the ball a little bit more, probably trending towards a 1,000-yard rusher. So you have the results from a statistical standpoint on the table that, yeah, the, I think this team is better. Now, win and losses-wise, no. But production-wise, as far as, you know, defense is playing well, there are more opportunities for the receivers, but I'm going to tell you, until Auburn gets a legitimate 
dual threat quarterback, RPO quarterback, this offense is, is going to look in disarray. Like the video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speaks Sports Auburn. Down deep south, college football is king. And on the plains of Auburn, the battle cries.